Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name is Curtis of Curtis Landry Photography here in Victoria, Texas. Today I'm gonna to be giving you a video on this. Boom! This is a Nikon FE2 35 millimeter single lens reflex film camera. I bought this camera in 1985. Yes, you heard that correct. 1985. I've owned this camera for over 35 years. I bought this camera while I was stationed at Lauren Air Force Base in the Air Force. And I can tell you, I've shot thousands of pictures with this camera. And this has been an awesome camera. It has been really, really good. This was the first single lens reflex camera, 35 millimeter that I ever bought. And it was awesome. It, it, was, it is a great camera. Uh, little disclaimer, I've set it down for quite a while. And I just recently picked it back up and using it again. This is a rock solid camera. If you're, if you're new into film photography or you're, or you're looking to upgrade your camera, boom, this is the way to go. Go ahead, take a look at it, the Nikon FE2. You'll wanna watch this video for sure. I'm gonna go do a little walk around and explain some of the features of this camera. Appreciate you tuning in, let's get to it. The Nikon FE2. I just want to read the forward that I got in the owner's manual when I, I bought this camera initially because it tells you pretty much what all this camera could do. The forward said, congratulations. You now own the fastest SLR camera on the market today. Now this was back in 1984, 85, 1985 I bought it. With a maximum shutter speed of one four thousandths of a second, you could halt the most fleet in action literally in its tracks. Complemented by a flash synchronization speed of one two hundred and fifty of a second is the fastest in the 35 millimeter SLR photography. The FE2 makes it easy to fill in the shadows in strong daylight. These speeds are made possible by Nikon's advanced camera technology. Employing lightweight honeycomb etched vertical traveling titanium shutters curtains. In addition to aperture priority automatic exposure from 1 4,000 second to 8 seconds, the FE2 offers full manual exposure control with accuracy and ensured by digitally quartz timing. The camera also has a battery power saving feature. A light touch of the lockable shutter release button activates the meter which then automatically switches off 16 seconds later, saving the battery. Other exciting features include three bright interchangeable focusing screens, automatic TTL flash photography with a Nikon dedicated flash unit, plus rapid film advance up to 3.2 frames per second with a motor drive. To obtain the best results, keep this instruction manual handy. But I thought that was neat. This was their Nikon's, this was Nikon's semi-professional camera. But let's look at some of the stuff that's on the front of this camera. This button here on the side, right here, there's a little button here. Let me take this lens hood off here because you don't really need the lens hood on there. I just leave the lens hood on there. So that way you can see the buttons a little bit better. I just like having a lens hood on this camera. I bought that back in 85 also. Here's the lens on it. This is Nikon 50 millimeter 1.4, Nikkor 1.4. This is your button here for removing your lens. What you do is you press the button, rotate it, pull it out. There's your mirror, it's in there. You can see your mirror. Then line up the, the red dot on the white dot. Rotate it in and lock, locks it in. Your aperture ring controls your aperture right there, your F stops. Also, you got a timer on this side. There's a lever here on the timer. Pull that lever down, you get 10 seconds. You got a depth of field indicator hold here, and you got a memory feature on here. So when when you take and uh, press the shutter down, you push the the timer towards the camera, and it'll hold the exposure. You hold that button to set your meter, in, and you can move and hold that button, take the picture, and it will not change it. In other words, you can shine on a, a the darker part of the subject that you're taking a picture of. Expose your meter, get your meter settings where you are, where you want them to be set all your settings and move the camera towards the center towards a brighter part holding that button and it'll keep it exposed for the dark then you press the shutter button and you'll get your exposure 
So this camera had a lot of advanced features on it, which was a pretty awesome camera. It came with, of course, you got your holders on here for your, for your strap. I, I put a Peak Design uh, shoulder harness on, and I got a wrist holder for Peak Design. I recommend them. They're awesome. But that's the front of the Nikon FE2. There's not a lot on the front there. This is for your flash sync. You can sync this up with your flash. You can take this off. This little button right here. And you can hook that up to a flash sync or to a strobe. So this thing had a lot of, this, this FE2 packs a lot of wallet for, so it's a, it's a great camera. I've had it for a long time. I'll never get rid of it. It's my favorite camera I've ever owned. The FE2 is an electronically controlled single lens reflex camera. With that being said, it's got to have some way to turn the power on. The way you turn the power on is you take your film advance lever and you pull it away from the camera body to that position there. Now the camera's on. Camera's off. When it's flush against the camera body, it's off. But when this lever's out, it's turned on. Okay? But that, that lever also serves another purpose besides power on. It is your advance. It's for advancing your uh, film. So let me just change this real quick here. So when you take your picture, I'm, it's got film in there, so I'm only going to do this one time because I don't want to waste film. So when you take the picture, you compose your shot, set your settings, you squeeze your shutter button. Boom. The shutter releases. Now, in order to advance your film, you grab your advanced film lever and you move it to the outside. And it'll go to that far. And you let it back. Boom. When it's back in that position, you're ready to shoot the next shot. All right? But if you want to do multiple exposures, which is really nice that this camera has a spot on here where you can shoot multiple exposures. Sorry about that. Uh, there's a mu multiple exposure lever on here. And what multiple exposures could be, say you got a model and you want to take a picture of this model. And in your picture, you want to have that same model three, two, three, or four times in the same picture. Nowadays, with digital, you can process that in camera, excuse me, in post, in Lightroom, and Photoshop. You could, you could process that and put, put her in there two, three, four, five, a hundred times if you want to. But in the film world, you have to do it in camera. So you have to have a way of not advancing the film. So that's what that does. Is what you would do is you'd set your model up, say... You set your model in this part of the scene here. You compose on your model, your shot, you take the picture. Instead of advancing the film like I just did, you're gonna push this lever right here, and you're gonna hold that, and you're gonna advance, you're gonna take the adv film advance lever, and you're gonna move it like you're advancing the film while holding this lever pushed, and let go. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna leave that film behind the shutter, it's going to leave, it's not going to advance to the next frame. Then you move your model. Remember again, we had our model, we had the model on, on, I can't remember which side I had it on. But say you model, you took the first picture here. Now you move the model over to here towards the middle. And you take the shot again. Now I want the model on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that lever again. I'm going to pull the advanced lever without rotating the film, the film's not going to move. I'm going to take a picture, boom, compose, recompose to that picture, take, take the picture of the model, and I'll have her on that one, on that one spot of the negative, it's going to burn her image three times on there. That's for multiple exposures. Down the road, I'll do a little tutorial about that, and hopefully I can show you how that works. But on the Nikon FE2, you got a camera, uh, a picture count over here. It's a little little window here that tells you how many pictures you've taken, which is nice. So when you go out there, you know, if you've got 36 roll exposure, look down, you shot 12 pictures, you know you got 24 left. Pretty awesome. As you can see here, here's the shutter button. It's got a threaded portion in it. The threaded portion, the reason why that's got a threaded hole in it is you can put a cable release in there. And what a cable release does is when you're taking longer exposures, any time you push the shutter, 
There's, there's opportunities in church, opportunities for the camera to move. So what you do is you screw a cable release in there. I got one right here, I'll show you. You just basically screw it into the top of it, like that. And there's my button for the cable release. And you squeeze the shutter with this and it won't move the camera because you're not touching the camera. You set the camera up on a tripod, set it up to pose your shot, take your fingers away from the camera, press the shutter release, press the shutter release, click, take the picture, the camera hasn't moved, you didn't introduce any camera shake to your photo. So you get crisp sharpness in your photo. It's an awesome feature that Nikon FE2 had on their cameras. Another awesome feature that I like on a Nikon FE2, this is your this is your shutter control knob. So you're on automatic. Green, the green A is automatic. That automatically selects your shutter speed for whatever your aperture is set for to let it enough light where it feels the meter inside is going to sense if it's properly exposed. If it's properly, it's going to set the shutter speed to the speed as required for the, the amount of light hitting the meter. But one of the neat things that the FE2 came with. Back in the 80s, almost all cameras only had a shutter speed of 2000 that you could manually set it to. If you can see here by the A, if you can see here right below the A, I know it's upside, let me rotate it around so it won't be upside down. It's got a 4000 shutter speed, 2000, 1500. So this was unprecedented for a camera back in the 80s to, for a single lens reflex camera that you handheld have a shutter speed of 4,000. It's pretty amazing. Uh, it's got a 250. The reason why the 250 shutter speed on here is marked in red, that is for your flash sync. It, it links up to the same flash uh, for your flash sync speed. And these other ones in orange, one, two, four, and eight seconds, those are in orange to warn you that any single time you're gonna be in that set on this camera, you're more than likely gonna introduce camera shake. Hence, like I showed you earlier, plugging a cable release on there, setting up on a tripod will eliminate that. And also it's got an M250 setting on here. What that's for, again, this is electronically camera. It's considered a semi-professional camera, but it's electronically controlled. What happens if you're out in the field and you're on a paid shoot and your camera battery goes dead? Not to worry, you set it to M250, that's a 250 shutter speed, and you can continue with your shoot. You just gotta make sure you have enough light, you may have to use a flash or whatever you gotta do, make sure you get the proper exposure, make sure your aperture's at the right set, and that at manual 250, this camera will work manually. It will not need anything, but all your metering and stuff inside the camera is taken away from you because the battery's dead. So basically you're setting your shutter speed at 250, you got your Film speed set, you just have to close and open your aperture to make sure you get your exposure proper. It's got a focal plane dot here to let you know where your focal plane is. Now when we get to the hot shoe, this is the hot shoe mount up here. There's several things on the hot shoe that I wanted to explain. If you look at it, there's, there's several dots there. The first dot on the front there, this is the monitor to contact. Right here, that's how it senses that, that the flash is on there. Then you got your hot shoe contact. The middle one, that's actually, when, when you press the button and fires the shutter, it's gonna send a signal to that flash to shoot the flash out. And the other two contacts back here on top are for your TTL. Yes, this camera can work with TTL flash. It's pretty neat. All right, now, and of course, this could be an accessory mount. This is your pentaprism. Your viewfinder's on the back here, and I'm gonna turn around and show you the back of the camera here in a little bit. You have your film speed here. That's your film speed dial. To set your film speed, you just lift up the outside plastic ring on the dial. There's a plastic ring on the outside. You pull this up. It's gonna be hard to show you. Pull this up and you rotate it. Okay, this is your film rewind lever. Right here, you would open this up, and after you're done, rewind the lever while holding the button on the bottom. And I'll show you that button in the bottom here a little bit. 
uh, but that's a film rewind lever. There's a lever here. That little lever here opens the back of the camera. If you could see the film speed, it runs, the film speed will run from 12 to I believe 3200 film speed you could run, put that speed of film. Now this is a little different than your DSLR camera. Basically, you're gonna buy your, purchase your film, read what your ASA is, which your ASA, whatever it says on your camera, could be 200 speed film, 400 speed film, 800, 2000, 1000, 3200, 12, 24. It could be whatever speed film it is, you have to rotate this dial to set this, the film speed. Basically, that's how you get your ISO on this camera. It has a bracketing control, so you can go one or two or three, I think it's up to two stops of brightness advance and two stops down. And that's a little button right here. You got a little button right here, you push this and you rotate the whole dial. Let me do it here. I'll push it down with this, which is not a big deal. Push it down and you rotate this dial. And I can go up to two stops overexposed, two stops underexposed. Uh, so that helps a lot. That's the top of the camera. Let's look at the back of the camera real quick. All right, let's look at the back of the camera. Again, this is your, this is your uh, power on lever or your film advance lever right there. Again, this is your viewfinder right here. Here's a serial number. This is normally on all your film boxes you get, when you get the film, I would take the top of the box off and I would slide it in here I can't remember if it's from below or you slide it in here so that way you know what speed film you got set in there. That's pretty much the back of it. When you pull this lever here, the back of this door opens up like this. And, and when I go, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to load film on this down the road. But that's the back of the camera. All right, here's the bottom. On the bottom, this is where your motor drive would hook up to it if you put a this Nikon, you could you could purchase an optional motor drive. I purchased one a long time ago, and uh, unfortunately, I dropped it and broke it, so I don't have it no more. But I used to have a motor drive that was on it, and that's where it plugs in there. And that basically, after you squeeze the shutter, it would automatically advance the film. And you could take 3.5, you shoot three and a half frames within a second. It was pretty fast, pretty amazing. This is your button you push for when you rewind your film. You push that button in. Use a rewind lever that I showed you that was on top by the ISA button. Rewind your film to rewind it. Uh, it's got a quarter 20 tripod screw there. This is where your batteries go. And that's your motor drive electronic contacts for the bottom. And that's pretty much the Nikon FE2. I appreciate you all watching this video today. Just tell you straight out right, I love this camera. I've had it since 1985. If you're seriously thinking about buying a Nikon FE2, I would tell you, do not hesitate. Buy the camera. You're going to love it. It is an awesome camera. I have enjoyed it every time I've picked it up. It has never once failed me. It has never once had to go in the shop for repairs. It is just an awesome workhorse. I've took many, many, many pictures with this camera. Like I said, I've, I've been using it since 1985. Uh, I've set it down for a long time, but I'm picking it back up and shooting more film here. But I love it. So if you're really seriously thinking about an FE2, I would, I would highly recommend going buy it. It is a great camera. It is a great camera. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit that like button. If you want to see more content from me, hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified when that content is ready and available for you to watch, hit the bell button. If you got any comments, concerns, or questions, do me a favor, leave them below. And I'll get back with you. But to all you photographers out there, do me a favor, get your camera out and take some pictures.